Are you having issues with your laser or CNC stopping in the middle of a job? Are you having connection issues like waiting on a connection or virtual COM ports not being recognized? Well, after being in the IT or computer industry since 1978, I might be able to help you resolve some of these issues. This is going to be a quick help video today that should solve these issues for you in just a few minutes. I've been on dozens of remote help sessions with laser owners in the past few years. And the most common issue I've seen is the laser stopping the job midstream. I wanted to take a few minutes today and try and address this issue since it comes up so often on the forums and the groups, and in fact came up yet again today in one of my groups. And what we'll be talking about today is why you should make some small change to your light burn settings, as well as your computer and your gear to prevent these issues. For Gerbil based lasers, they're essentially an Arduino ESP32 class controller running standard Gerbil uh, 1.1 firmware. That means that most diode lasers behave the same, like the Lasermatic that you see behind me here, or Fox Alien, or, or Tour, Atomstack, SculptFun, and many others. There's a newer control in the device settings in Lightburn that addresses the issue of controller behavior stopping the job midway. There are actually a few reasons this might happen. So I'll cover the most common first and then other reasons and best practices later. So let's get started. Number one, the most common reason for interruptions on longer jobs is the USB goes to sleep. All stock Windows machines and maybe some Macs allow USB to switch to low power mode depending on your power management settings and that varies by device and your power plan. If you just change your power plan to high performance, this will stop the USB from going into low power mode. You can also change the setting in your computer device manager in the USB section by double clicking the USB controller and then on the power management tab, disallow the computer from ever putting the USB to sleep. On laptops, Windows can suspend USD devi devices after a period of low inactivity, typically between 10 and 30 minutes to conserve battery. I highly recommend not running Lightburn on a laptop and especially on a battery. If you must use a laptop, make sure it's plugged into the wall for continuous power. Number two, you can also enable the DTR signal in Lightburn. DTR stands for Data Terminal Ready. This is a hardware signal line used in serial communications like COM and USB. In plain terms, the Enable DTR symbol checkbox in Lightburn controls whether Lightburn activates the DTR line when opening the serial connection to your laser's controller. When turned on, Lightburn asserts that the signal, which tells the controller, I'm ready to talk. Uh, when it's unchecked, it leaves it floating or inactive, so to speak. DTR is used to automatically reset the Arduino or microcontroller when Lightburn connects. This reset ensures Gerbil boots cleanly and starts in a known state before a job. If DTR is disabled, the controller might not reset properly, and this causes um, random connection issues, uh, perhaps the laser not firing, job stopping midway or freezing, 
the laser stopped firing midway, but the job appears to continue without firing the laser. And the console showing gibberish until you power cycle the laser. Or a connection state that says waiting for connection. So most gerbil based lasers, uh, including my laser Matic you see behind me, you want to enable uh, DTR signal. You want to have that turned on. To do this, click the wrench and screwdriver icon, and then on the basic settings tab and under other options on the right side, tick on enable DTR signal. Simple to do. This keeps the uh, data terminal ready when it's in use. Number three is a uh, poor USB connection or bad USB cable, loss of power to the USB plug. Poor USB connections can be from improper usage, you not plugging them in or unplugging them correctly, putting them straight in and out. Uh, your laser comes with a USB cable. Most modern lasers now have uh, USB-C at the laser source where the control board are, uh, is and a USB-A at the computer. These connections are consumables. Most people don't know this, so to speak, and they have limited lifespans. While a USB-C will serve you for a long time, uh, 10 to 20,000 connections, uh, unless you insert it or remove it improperly, the uh, USB-A end only has uh, a lifetime of about 1,500 connections. So if you're in the habit of disconnecting the cable from your computer or laptop on a regular basis, you can expect both the cable and the port on your computer to wear out relatively quickly on the A side. Keeping in mind, this, is, this also applies to the USB ports on your computer. If you're going to be plugging and unplugging your USB devices from your computer regularly, consider purchasing a short USB extension cable. And everything I talk about today, there'll be links down in the description uh, to my Amazon store. And keep that cable permanently attached to the USB port on your computer and plugging in your devices or your hub to the extension cable. Using this method will theoretically extend the life of your computer's USB port indefinitely, not considering things like oxidation, um, thermal cycling, and power surges. The laser should be plugged directly into your USB port if it's going to be a permanent connection or a short extension cable for best lifespan on the computer. For best performance, however, it, it, you must use a hub if you have multiple USB devices, and that hub must be a powered hub. What a powered USB hub actually does is uh, it has its own external power supply. Usually that's going to be 5 volts, 2 to 3 amps. That means it doesn't draw all its power from your computer's USB port. It feeds each connected device with a stable amount of voltage and current independently. In short, a powered USB hub, hub equals external 5 volt power, clean, isolated, consistent USB power, and data. So why does this matter for lasers and CNC controllers? Well, number one, it prevents voltage drops. Your laser's controller board and stepper drivers pull current through the USB cable for communication and sometimes logic power. If voltage drops below, say, 4.75 volts, even momentarily, the controller can reset or drop the connection mid-job. A powered hub ensures your controller always sees a stable, regulated 5-volt signal, even when motors or fans kick on. The result is fewer random pauses, freezes, or disconnects mid-burn. 
Number two, it also protects your computer's USB ports. Laser controllers, especially ones sharing a power ground with the machine frame, can backfeed voltage or uh, EMI, which is electrical noise, into the USB cable. A powered hub acts like a buffer or a fuse. It isolates your PC from sudden current spikes, ESD, or noise. The result is you save your mother motherboard's USB controller from potential damages. Number three, it improves data integrity. Lasers use continuous serial data streaming during a job. Any noise, EMI, or under voltage can corrupt packets, which causes Gerbil to in interpret garbage. <laughs> the laser stops or skips lines. A powered hub provides cleaner data, data signaling with more consistent voltage levels and stronger signal integrity. The result is smoother engraving and reliable long burns. So those five, six hour burns are going to work perfectly. Number four, more total power for multiple devices. If you're running a laser engraver and let's say a webcam for a light burn camera, maybe a USB SSD drive for your computer or your mouse, your key, your keyboard or wireless, your motherboard's five volt rail may struggle to feed them all. It's usually limited to about 0.5 to 0.9 amps per port, and that can be even less if it's shared internally. A powered hub can deliver up to two amps per port, depending on the model. The result is everything works simultaneously without any of your devices starving for current. Number five, optional EMI filtering and surge protection. Better powered hubs have uh, ferret chokes or filter capacitors to reject noise and polyfuse protection for each port. These small features make a big difference when your laser stepper motors and power supply are generating electric noise. The ideal setup for your laser or any Gerbil laser or CNC is Use the computer's rear USB port. Use a high quality short cable, one to three foot extension cable. Use a high quality powered USB hub. Use a shielded USB cable to the laser controller. If you're buying a, a new USB cable, get one with a ferret choke on the laser cable near the controller end. For extra noise suppression. If you're not replacing your cable, you can also buy ferret chokes. They're small little rings or cylinders uh, made of magnetic material, hence ferret, that you clamp around your cable, usually near one or even both ends if you want extra protection. This acts as a uh, noise filter, blocking high frequency electrical interference that can travel along the cable's shielding or power lines. You've probably seen them without realizing it if you don't know what they are. They're a small, smooth bump near the end of a laptop power cable or your monitor cable. That's the ferret choke. Now, you can purchase these clip-on chokes for a few dollars for a 10-pack. Place it close to the laser's controller end of the USB cable, at least. That's where most of the noise enters the, the line. You can add another one near the computer end if you want extra protection. So if you have long power cables or stepper motor wires, you can also snap chokes on those too to reduce the EMI even further. For extra protection, what I do is I loop the cable through the ferret, put it through, come around and back through again. And if, you, if it fits, and this will double the uh, filtering effect 
Make sure you purchase them in the right size though. Um, usually five to eight millimeter inside diameter should be perfect for uh, a laser engraver. At the end of the day, most laser stop mid job issues aren't software bugs or bad hardware. They're um, communication hiccups, a weak USB signal, Windows trying to save power, or a little EMI noise can all bring your project to a screeching halt. The fix is simple. Disable USB selective suspend. Keep the DTR signal enabled in Lightburn. Use a powered hub and snap on a few ferret chokes near the controller. Those small tweaks will make a huge difference. Once you've done them on your laser, it'll run smooth from start to finish without any midstream interruptions or surprises. So uh, my goal today was to cover this topic to help the thousands of people posting this issue daily to social media. I've tried to cover everything I know about this issue. And if you're having this problem, I hope the simple tips I've given you in this video will resolve that for you. So I hope you enjoyed this video today as much as I enjoyed making it for you. And as always, I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.